As some of you might know, James, Dom, Ross, Aaron, and I went on a tour back in October doing a show called Scribble Showdown. It was the first tour we've all been on, besides Aaron, because he didn't wait for us. The shows were all super fun, and we all enjoyed touring with each other a lot, and honestly, it was the most entertaining thing I've done in a while. But this video isn't about the shows. It's about the in-betweens. We had to perform in Boston, Brooklyn, Austin, San Francisco, Medford, Seattle, and Portland, all within 11 days. <laughs> so you know that those off times are gonna get a little hectic while we're just trying to survive and not leave our souls behind. The first leg of the tour, we took flights to our destinations. Boston and Brooklyn had no out of the ordinary stuff going on besides the fact Ross, Dom, and I were super addicted to Pokemon Go and were spinning Pokestops left and right together on that grind. Don't worry, it only took two days for peer pressure to crack James down enough to download it and get addicted with us. We arrived in Austin on the third and this was our first completely free day. Ross and Aaron really wanted to get some Texan barbecue, so we all went to dinner at this little barbecue chain they heard was really good. Everyone got their food and were in heaven, except for me because vegan check. But honestly, it did look really good and I was glad they were enjoying it. Afterwards, Aaron and James wanted to go to a card shop for Magic the Gathering cards since a new pack was coming out. So we headed over there and one of the employees' names was Jojo and he was a dog and I miss him. The next day we got into the van to head to the venue and Ross just goes, so did anyone else have a rough night last night? Turns out, Ross, Dom, and Aaron all got food poisoning from their barbecue. James and I were safe because I didn't eat any, and I don't know, I guess James is weird. The next free day we had was in San Francisco. We were a good five days into traveling, and some of us were running out of clean clothes to wear, so instead of finding a laundromat, we headed over to a Target nearby to just buy new ones. After shopping a bit, we noticed there was a huge arcade right next door, so of course, we went in. Aaron and Dom played some DDR, but what caught Ross and James's eyes was this big elaborate VR setup where the players are strapped into these adult baby walker looking things. I mean, anyone with eyes could tell this thing was jank as hell, but that just made it more essential to play. Ross asked the guy at the stand if they could play, which the guy said they needed arcade cards to scan, so they went and did that, and when they came back, the guy was finishing up working at the bumper car booth, looked over at us, and just walked out of the arcade and left. Rude. We got another person over and Ross and James got set up and I think this video explains the whole thing. After the San Francisco show, we switched over to travel by tour bus, which we were all super excited for. There were 12 bunk beds, two lounge areas, a TV where we all played Smash on, and one bathroom. The only main rule was, you can't poop on the bus. I won't get into details, but technically, you can poop on the bus, but you essentially destroy it from the inside out. So no pooping on the bus. This is the pinnacle of luxury. Given that information, we all got mild poop anxiety. As soon as you're told you can't poop within a certain window of time, it becomes your body's personal goal to aim for those hours and those hours only. Luckily, James, Dom, Aaron, and I were okay, but it hit Ross hard. Maybe it was the fact he got the worst case of food poisoning out of all of us, but he couldn't poop if his life depended on it. And it kinda did. He went two days without a single poop and he was scared. By the time we got to Oregon, he was going crazy. Guys, I've, I've got to poop today. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. We all checked into the motel rooms our tour manager Matt booked for us to shower and finally do laundry and had a bit of time to spare. So as the friends we are, we decided to dedicate it to trying to help Ross poop. Aaron shared some poop exercises he said always helped him. And I pulled up this song on YouTube my friend showed me that was titled, Music That Makes You Poop. And with all variables combined, I think it was working. Ross is really trying to poop right now. You can't poop on the bus, dude. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta get it out before you get on the bus because you know, they, 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 they the septic tank can't handle the poop. You can only do urine, so you gotta poop before the bus takes off. Because if the bus takes off, you gotta wait for the next stop. So I don't wanna wake up in the middle of the night and have to shit the bag and throw it out the window. I don't wanna be that guy. I don't wanna litter. I wanna be the big boy. I wanna take a big. Shit. 
After that whole ordeal, Ross, Dom, James, and I went out to catch some Pokemon. Aaron stayed in the bus to build some magic decks, but the area we were parked in was a bit sketchy. The laundry room sink in the motel had a marijuana in it. So Ross found a knife and we held it while catching a bunch of shroomish. It was well worth it because James, Ross, and I all found shiny Pokemon at the exact same time. By the time we got back, James and Aaron were really hungry. Ross, Dom, and I got Taco Bell, but we also all had that this morning, so James wanted to try and find something else to have, which was a mission failed. So he and Aaron went out to get Taco Bell, but by the time they walked over to it, only the drive through was open. They tried to just walk up to the window, but to no avail they didn't have enough characteristics to pass as a car. So they had to turn to the only option they had. Call an Uber to go through the drive through in. It worked. <laughs> so basically all of us had Taco Bell for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We were living like kings over here. In Seattle, we got to the theater and Matt reserved another room for us to shower in at the hotel next to the venue. I wanted to wash my face and Ross wanted to freshen up. So as we were walking out to go to the room, Matt grabbed us and said, look, when you walk in, don't talk to the concierge or anything. Don't even look at anyone. Just go straight to the elevator and head up to the room. So we're like, okay. We walked in and did exactly what Matt said. Didn't talk to anyone, didn't even breathe in anyone's direction. No oxygen was stolen. Just went over to the elevator, pressed the button, and then out of nowhere, the manager pops out of a mystery door right next to us that we didn't even know was a door and goes, what room are you going to? Dude, he was like an NPC in a video game that teleports in front of you to prevent you from going out of bounds. Ross and I were stunned and just went, uh, 601? And the manager goes, you're not the person who booked that room. I've known every guest in their respective rooms in this hotel since 1975. You're not allowed in there. No visitor policy. What kind of hotel has a no visitor policy? It's a hotel. Visitors is their business. <laughs> so we went back to Matt and explained what happened. One of the managers at the theater went over to talk to the manager in the hotel because the hotel owns the venue. But the thing that was really annoying to us was that we were the ones who were performing at the venue, which directly affects the amount of rooms they sell. I, I should give them some slack though. To their credit, they did tell us they'd let one more of us go in the room if we paid a fee of $80, so. But the theater was really nice to us and the Seattle audience is great. Before each show, we had a VIP Q&A section, so when we finish that, we have like an hour before the actual show. And during that one in-between hour, there's a Mewtwo raid in Pokemon Go, which doesn't happen too often. So you already know that Dom, Ross, James, and I were frothing at the mouth. We, oh my god, we gotta get that Mewtwo! After the Q&A, we all got up calmly, walked off stage, and when we were out of sight, literally bolted out the back door of the venue and ran down the street to a Mewtwo raid. By the time we finished it, there was a crowd of like 30 people also catching Mewtwo. Not people who watched our videos, just normal people who all just wanted a taste of the Neutron style. We all caught a Mewtwo and actually had time to get another before the show starts. So there was a march of 30 people just playing Pokemon Go, working together to get Mewtwo's, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever been a part of. Also, James caught a shiny three-star totally all by himself, Ross definitely didn't need to help him, and made us all jealous. The tour was so fun. I couldn't have chosen a better group of friends to travel and do a show with. The team that helped us was amazing, and the shows were so fun to perform. Every city had an amazing audience, especially the ones where I won, and it was a really surreal experience. Um, I really want to thank you for helping me get to this point, and I still can't believe I get to do this crazy awesome stuff for a living.